everyone. My name is Rose Yell, and I lead product for Google Maps Platform. I want to thank you guys for joining us here for our second session at Google I.O. this year. And for those of you watching on YouTube, hello and welcome. Yesterday, we talked about how we're changing the way we build product and what that means for you as a developer. We also introduced a new name, Google Maps Platform. Today, I want to talk a little bit more about why platform more accurately represents our ambitions and the products we want to build with you. We spent a lot of time yesterday talking about how we're making Google Maps Platform easy to use, simple, and scalable by partnering with cloud. This means one website, one plan, one console for all your maps and cloud projects, and the ability to scale seamlessly without interruption as your product grows. We also talked about our core products, the ones you know and love from the last 13 years, maps, places, and routes. These are the foundational building blocks of any location-based experience. Today, I want to talk about how we go beyond the basics with industry solutions. In particular, I want to talk about one of our first industry solutions, Real World Games a Google Maps Platform. To understand what this means, I'm going to bring Clementine up to talk more about what exactly our offering is and how it works. But first, I want to talk about the journey that we took to get there and how we really built it. So as product managers, we get ideas from all sorts of places. But the most important one is from you guys, our developers. In this case, about 18 months ago, a lot of game developers were approaching us to ask how they could use Google Maps to build real-world games and whether we had the product to support them. We were intrigued, but honestly, up until this point, we had never investigated what it really takes to build a product from the grounds up just for a particular use case or industry. All of our core products were designed to be universal. So to do this right, we interviewed dozens of top game developers in the world. We asked them what they wanted to build and why, what tools they used, how they ran their business, and what success really looked like for them. Once we got a basic picture of what type of game they wanted to build and what success looked like, we got deeper into problems that Google Maps can really help them solve. From there, we worked closely with a small group of developers who gave us regular feedback and helped us test every build. There are also developers who are launching with us this summer, so coming soon to a mobile screen near you. The result is our V1 product, which helps with two core use cases that are unique to understanding of the real world. First is world building. We build an SDK that allows developers to build beautiful, fancy worlds based on Google's understanding of the real world. Second is mission planning. We answer what seems like a very simple question. What is the best place to place a game, no matter where you are in the world? And that is how the Playable Locations API was born. And Clementine will talk about how that's not quite as simple as it sounds. This is the type of industry solution and partnership we want to have with you, our developers, on Google Maps platform. So now that you know our journey here, I'd love to welcome Clementine up to talk about the product and how it works. Awesome. Thank you, Rose, and uh, hello, Mountain View. My name is Clementine Jacoby, and I'm the product manager for the gaming offering that Rose just introduced. So this product is hot off the press. We actually announced it in March at the Game Developers Conference in San Francisco, and it's been overwhelming to see the response from the developer community so far. It's super, super exciting to see the range of ideas that developers want to bring to the real world stage. So today I'm here to actually dive a bit deeper into the product and tell you what we've built. But to do that, I have to take you back to 1972. So raise your hand if you've ever played Pong. OK, so almost everybody. Uh, I want you to think about the game world in Pong. It's a two-dimensional world and a single screen. And this is where gaming started. Later, those single screens became one of many, part of still two-dimensional but more complex game worlds like we saw in Super Mario Brothers. 
And today, there's this ever-increasing demand to model game worlds as more and more realistic 3D environments on bigger and bigger scales. So game developers invest huge amounts of time, energy, and money in this problem, in developing game worlds. And uh, we at Google Maps were surprised to discover that they spend about as much energy as we do on modeling a world for their users to explore. Modeling this all by hand can produce really breathtaking results. But it's also very expensive. And it's getting more and more expensive as we scale this problem up. And so we're constrained by that. As an example, the game world in Grand Theft Auto V, which is one of the richest and biggest game worlds ever created, was about as big as downtown Manhattan at launch. But what if we could scale the art of creating game worlds? What if we could create game worlds in which detail didn't have to be balanced with size? Hold that thought. <laughs> in parallel to that progression, mobile phones have gotten good, like really good. Good enough that developers can start to convincingly blend realities. And across the mobile ecosystem, we're seeing digital content brought into the physical world by smartphones that are now powerful enough to do this blending of reality. And Google Maps specializes in reality. <laughs> For over a decade now, we have been building our model of the world, capturing the complexity of the real world, bringing it to your smartphone so that you can explore no matter where you are. So game worlds are getting bigger and more realistic. Phones are getting better and more powerful. And as Rose said, lots and lots of game developers were coming to Google Maps asking for a product. So we looked at the demand, we looked at the momentum, and we decided that we wanted to pitch in. So we set out to create an offering specifically for gaming to help developers build games based on the real world, powered by Google Maps data, and backed by Google Maps infrastructure. We turn the real world into your playground, allowing you to take the richness of reality as your starting point. Before I dive deeper, I just want to show you a quick 30-second video. This should have audio. All right, so there's obviously <laughs> thanks. There's a lot of magic happening in that 30-second video, but I'm going to break it down for you in the rest of this talk. So with this product, we really wanted to both build something that gave developers the control that they were after, but was also easy to get started with. And so like Rose said, we went and talked to lots of developers about how to strike that very elusive balance of control and ease of use. And from those conversations, what we learned is that there are three key things that developers really want from us. The first one is sort of obvious. They want access to Google Maps data, that rich, accurate, and living model of the real world. Now, critically, our data is really fresh. We make 25 million updates a day to this map to reflect the pace at which the world is changing. And it's all backed by the same infrastructure that serves billions of daily requests to Google Maps. The second piece is that developers wanted the real world in the game engines that they were already using, where they could leverage a whole ecosystem of tools for game development. So we brought the real world into Unity, which is the most popular engine for creating mobile games. Our SDK does all of the heavy lifting for you. No Google Maps expertise needed. This allows game developers to focus, really, on what they do best, which is creating rich and immersive gameplay. The third piece I want to spend a little more time on. The third piece is that we help you design interactions around real world places. And this is a really fascinating technical challenge, it turns out. To understand how hard this is, I want you to think about designing a scavenger hunt. It's up to you to decide where players need to go and what they need to do when they get there. 
That's already sort of hard, as anyone who's designed a scavenger hunt knows. But now imagine that you're trying to design that scavenger hunt around a city on the other side of the world that you've never been to before. That's harder. And now imagine that you need to expand that scavenger hunt from one city to every town and suburb on the planet. That's the challenge that you're up against when creating a global scale location-based game. Doing this well requires knowing a lot about the player's environment, no matter where they are. Because no matter where they are, you want to find things that are unique and interesting about the area around them. So you need to know things like, you know, what do people take uh, pictures of? What do they ask for directions to? Which areas are vibey and interesting that players might enjoy exploring? Uh, which ones are off the beaten path that you should place rare treasures at and reward players for finding? You'll want to know all of those things, but just knowing all of it isn't enough, because you also have to find a sensible way of prioritizing between all these signals to find the best place for your player at that point in time and space. And as a bonus, these things are constantly changing. So a street that's bustling during the day might be abandoned at night. A busy mall might turn into a restricted construction site. And they do all the time. Plus, even if you worked this all out once, it's still not enough. And this is the sad spoiler alert, because it can take years to build a good game. And so you need something that's going to be challenging and dynamic for years, too, which means that these experiences have to be somewhat dynamic. They have to change over time. Hopefully, I've illustrated that this is a really hard problem. So now I'm going to talk about how we help you solve it. And in short, We've built a really special product specifically for this use case. It's called the Playable Locations API. Its charter is to help developers find the best places to play games anywhere in the world. So we start by combing the Earth, <laughs> looking for places to stage interactions. These could be businesses or public spaces or areas of historical or cultural interest. The important thing is that we start with getting sufficient coverage so that your game will be interesting no matter where in the world your user opens their phone to play the game. The next very important step is that we get rid of all the bad points. So we make sure that there aren't points in water or in the middle of big roads um, or anywhere else that's inappropriate for playing games. And it turns out that the world is full of places that aren't very playable and often for very non-obvious reasons. Cemeteries, landfills, emergency room entrances, these are all bad places to play, but for like different and nuanced reasons. So we have to figure that out. Now that we've gotten rid of the bad points, we need to rank every place in the world by how playable it is, which is also non-trivial. So we take into account a huge range of signals in, in uh, deciding how playable a point is. But one signal that developers really care about is recognizability. Because your player is not going to have fun if they can't find the place that you're trying to get them to go. So we use a vast array of signals to determine what the most recognizable places around your player are. And then we rank those places by prominence, which is represented by the, the big blue dots here. Now, we also recognize that the best places to play, they're going to vary depending on the kind of game that you want to make. So we let you tailor your request to find the places that will work for your particular game, for the experience you want to create. You can set up rules and filters and choose the places that are appropriate for your particular game. And I'll show you a bit more of that later on. But here's an example. You may want to direct young players to busy social spaces where they can interact with their friends. Or maybe instead, your game is designed to get players to move, and so you place collectibles along jogging tracks and in public parks. Or maybe your game is designed to sort of seamlessly fit into users' everyday lives, and so you center gameplay around popular cafes, commuting paths, busy thoroughfares, etc. This choice is up to you. We give you that control to create whatever experience you want, and then we help you do that at global scale. 
This is possible because the API gives you metadata about each playable location. So this means that you can control the types of places that appear in your game and the types of game objects that appear at each sort of location. So I'll give you a very literal example. Let's say that you interpret the real world place type super literally and place treasure chests at banks, provisions at grocery stores, and power-ups at doctor's offices. The result would be a game that works as well in downtown Tokyo as it does in a Sydney suburb or in the rural United States. This is pretty cool, and getting to this end state manually is virtually impossible. These design challenges require a detailed understanding of your player's context and environment, no matter where they are. But with this Playable Locations API, you can build your game once, design it once, and know that it'll work everywhere that Google Maps does in over 220 countries around the world. That's a lot of things that you don't have to worry about and billions of things that you don't have to do. <laughs> Instead, you focus on the what of creating exciting experiences while we help you figure out the where. OK, so that is the first component. The second component that I want to talk about is the Maps Unity SDK. So now we're going to look at some maps. Imagine now that you're building the game world or the environment that all of those interactions are going to take place in. The very first thing you need is high quality maps data. To help you with that piece, we bring the real world into Unity. Let's take a look. This is Manhattan, rendered by the Maps Unity SDK in a demo app that we put together for this talk. Our SDK makes it easy to turn this blank canvas into a stylized game environment. Here's an example. Notice how custom textures have been applied to buildings, parks, and roads to create this futuristic look and feel. We give you fine-grained control over this process by modeling each map feature as a separate game object. What that means is that what was previously a blank street corner could be a sci-fi adventure, a medieval setting, or really anything else that you dream up. Now, every game object is annotated with metadata. This allows you to make styling decisions based on the real world. Since this is a candy land, I might decide to make shops chocolate bars or turn restaurants into gingerbread. Changing the heights of buildings is really easy, too. And through simple customizations like these, you can create a game world that's connected to the real world but has your own look and feel. OK, now we're going to marry that 3D world with the Playable Locations API that I just told you about. So here, the green dots represent playable locations around the player. Let's turn the prominent ones into mission points so that our players have somewhere interesting nearby to play. And these will be represented by funky rainbows, obviously. Now, because you get metadata, you can also control what types of objects appear at what types of places. So for example, we could place candy stands at real world stores. Or as another example, we could place gummy bear characters at real world restaurants. And now, if we were to switch back to our fantasy theme, these could instead be dragons and treasure chests. Or in our futuristic theme, spaceships and floating loot. But whatever your game, you're focused on the fun part of creating rich and engaging gameplay while we do the rest. Keep in mind that this is all happening inside of Unity. And so if I press Stop here, you can see that the scene is empty because this is all being created dynamically at runtime. We include lots of other features to help you build your game as well, like nine slicing for texturing buildings, decorators for adding gargoyles or parapets or other objects to roofs, um, borders for simulating contact shadows. And we include the names of roads and buildings. We also integrate with Unity's lighting system, which helps you create a beautiful day-night cycle. 
And we support Unity's level of detail system, which means that we automatically fade out distant objects to maximize mobile performance. But most importantly, Unity is a physics engine, which means that you can now use the real world's geometry in any 3D physics-based game. The spaceship always gets the applause. OK, enough about features. Next, I'm going to show you some examples of just how far you can push this platform. So the technique used to create this scene is a little different from the previous examples. In this case, procedural rules were used to assemble a city based on the real world's layout. Below, we can see cars driving around and lampposts and power lines. And as we zoom in, you can start to see just how detailed this game world really is. There are cafe tables, shop fronts, people arguing. <laughs> this technique is more sophisticated, but it's that same semantic model of the real world that makes it possible. Let's look at another example. This scene looks totally different, but it's using the same technique. The way the buildings work is really cool. They assemble themselves from modular components to create a stylistic interpretation of the real world. Or to put it another way, the cityscape is grown organically to match the real world. What's really incredible about this is that these examples were all created by one developer in a matter of weeks. And so what you can see is that he was able to achieve this insane level of detail in a really short amount of time. I want to talk about one more example before we move on. This is a road running through Glacier Park, Glacier National Park, in Montana. Here, the trees, rocks, and vegetation were all procedurally generated down to individual blades of grass. Elevation data was brought into the Maps Unity SDK to create this vast open world environment, complete with mountains, roads, towns, animals, and wilderness areas. And what we really like about this example is that it shows that you're not limited to urban centers when building these games. All right, this is the most exciting part of the talk. Uh, now that you've seen the product in action, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you a little bit about what developers are already creating. So for the last year, we've been working with a small set of developers to refine this offering uh, with folks who wanted to build games starting this year or launching this year. Today, I'm going to show you three of those games. First up, we have Jurassic World Alive. This is the second installment of Ludia's Jurassic World series created in partnership with Universal Studios. <laughs> in this game, players are part of the Dinosaur Protection Group and use the game to search for, find, and rescue dinosaurs. All right. All right, here's a shot from inside the game. So in Jurassic World Alive, visual contrast was really, really important to the developer. Uh, so they limited the building heights so that the dinosaurs were the first thing that players saw on the map. Let's take a closer look at the gameplay. So Ludia, the developer for this game, uses the Playable Locations API to spawn dinosaurs based on their actual characteristics and behavior. So you'll get some dinosaurs that spawn at certain times of the day and others that only spawn in certain kinds of areas. For example, you might find some very toothy dinosaurs hanging around your dentist's office. Jurassic World Alive also features some really cool AR gameplay powered by AR Core on Android. And when it comes to safety, Jurassic World Alive spared no expense. By using the playable locations API, 
They were able to help players avoid unplayable locations and stay safe, while also encouraging players to meet up at POIs, which introduced this social component into their game. OK, next up, we have Ghostbusters World, <laughs> a location-based AR collection game built by Next Stage in collaboration with publisher 433. Ghostbusters World features first-person shooter mechanics. It also allows players to interact in real time as they capture and collect ghosts. Here's a shot from inside their game. Notice the London Eye in the background. High fidelity landmarks really help orient the player in their surroundings, and they instantly make the game feel connected to the real world. Finally, we have The Walking Dead, our world, built by Next Games and based on AMC's mega hits. This is a location-based AR survival game where players experience the real world after the zombie apocalypse. In this game, players need to explore the real world, battle walkers, form alliances with other survivors, and build safe havens. Let's take a closer look. Here you're seeing the world inside the game. And you can see that it's abandoned and crumbling. So this sort of gives you the sense that you're in the zombie apocalypse and allows you to see your familiar world in an unfamiliar context. Here's what Next Game said about their map. From the get-go, we wanted to heavily customize the map. We have a unified look throughout the game, which is important for creating an immersive experience. We love the buildings and landmarks the most, especially in bigger cities. It's unbelievable how rich and recognizable they are. They truly make our game feel alive, and there are so many things we want to do in the future. We've barely scratched the surface with what the map can provide us. One cool thing to note here is the way they squash the buildings as the player approaches. I think this gives the map a really open feel, while you can still see the real world heights of buildings further away. Now notice that our player here is surrounded by walkers. Next Games use the Playable Locations API to create a lot of variance in their missions. It was really important to them to be able to change gameplay as much and as often as they wanted to, to actually match their players' daily routines. So Next Games used our API to put points where players already were. One big surprise for Next Games was that every country in the world comes with its own bespoke set of considerations. So as one example, consider Finland. Finland is where Next Games is based. And in Finland, they have a concept called the freedom to roam, which means that anyone can freely enter any forested area no matter who owns it, as long as it's not someone's backyard. This results in vast playable areas in Finland. On the other hand, in the US, you don't want people entering cornfields that are privately owned, or in Asia, rice paddies, and trampling and ruining the crops because they're hunting zombies. So what this means is that it's not actually enough to know that a place is a forest. You have to know what a forest means in that context and country. And it's not enough to know that something is a field. You have to know if it's a field of grass that's great for walking, or if it's a delicate rice paddy that could be ruined by zombie hunters. This is a really big challenge, but it's one that's made easier with the Playable Locations API. All of these games are coming soon, along with lots of others. We can't wait to play them and to see what you'll build as well. So I'm just going to step back and summarize now. With this offering, we want to make it easy for developers to do four things. First, create dynamic experiences at global scale. You'll have access to hundreds of millions of 3D buildings, points of interest, landmarks, roads, and parks to form the foundation of your game world. And this all relies on that same model of the world that Google Maps has been building since 2005. So you'll have fresh and accurate data no matter where your players are. Second, completely customize your game world. You can turn an entire river into a lava flow, 
fill parks with trees, oceans with waves, whatever you want. You can do simple things like change colors or textures, but you can also be much more involved and swap entire features out for prefabs like you're seeing here. Third, design gameplay around real world places. We talked about this a lot. Find the right locations for each type of mission, character, and in game reward. Drive your players to popular places or take them off the beaten path. That choice is up to you, and either way will help you create your unique gameplay at global scale. And finally, deliver rich experiences at huge scale. Relying on Google's infrastructure and serving capacity means faster response times, scale on demand, and the peace of mind that your games are going to just work. We're really excited about the possibilities, and I hope you are too. Uh, and with that, I'm going to hand it back to Rose. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Clementine. Thank you, Clementine, for showing us just how this product works and the problems we're solving for game developers. I have to admit, I've been pretty addicted to helping with the zombie apocalypse. So you'll find me routinely on my commute and at home watching TV and helping clear zombie infestations. And I hope you guys will join me soon, because I need help. Um, as I mentioned in the beginning, we realized that this is the type of product that we can do more and more of as industry spawn up, really focus on how do, they, how do we interact with the real world. We're excited to partner with you guys, developers. We're excited to do more solutions like this. If your imagination is running wild, so is ours. So please come talk to us. So with that, if you want to sign up and build a game with us, please go to our uh, website, cloud.google.com slash maps dash platform slash gaming to fill out a quick form to tell us what you're building. The form is pretty simple, but don't worry, we'll be in contact to ask you more about your game and to help you get started. We're really excited to work with you guys, but this is new territory for us. So we're starting by working with a smaller set of game studios. That doesn't mean that we won't be in touch. So please submit your contact info and be patient with us. And to talk to us in person today, we will be having office hours at 1.30. So with that, Clementine and I just wanted to say thank, thank you, you guys. <laughs>